friends. Welcome to 2023, new year, new pattern. All right, let's talk about features. So as you can see, it is a small, compact design, and it is a trifold wallet. Now, I did design it for my young sons in mind, but it is a great gender neutral wallet as well, as you'll see from my testers using bright, vibrant prints. It's good for anybody in your life at any age. So this top zippered compartment is for the cash. It was important to me that they had it zippered because I didn't want their stuff to fall out. Also has a zippered coin pocket right here, two card slots and an ID slot. You'll notice that this is all waterproof canvas. So it was designed around waterproof canvas. And I did find that this material was the most domestic machine friendly. So if you're brand new to sewing and you only have a domestic machine at your disposal, this will work just fine for you. Um, after I made this, I did decide to try it in other materials and it's just as cute in a custom vinyl print. Uh, again, the edges fold over and it's left raw. So in the interior of the pocket, also unlined and raw. So that's why we are choosing specific materials that are ideal for this. You don't wanna use quilt cotton because you're gonna to have to interface it. You're gonna see the interfacing and it will fray over time with that folded edge. You're certainly welcome to do your own mods if you wanna add extra width around the border so that you can fold it in and have it finished. But as written, it's made for those non-fraying materials. But the good news is you can't see the edges. So this isn't a edge paint project, so calm down. Um, I also tried it in waxed canvas. I also tried it with snaps and I loved that too. It gave it a little bit more of a mature look. Super, super cute. Still very compact. Uh, the thing with wax canvas is it can fray a little bit more than say the waterproof canvas, but not nearly as much as like a normal canvas so just keep that in mind and then I wanted a little bit edgier of a look so I did an all leather version I added the snaps to this and I've also added like a little d-ring thing because I thought it would be fun to maybe add a chain and give it an edgier look so put one end on that end and you chain it to your belt loop and you just stick it in your back pocket For that look um, or you can add it to the waterproof canvas version for that young kiddo like mine and put it on a lanyard so they can wrap it around their neck and not misplace it just like that now if when they go to open it it's nice because they can take what they need and see it like this and then close it and then just drop it i know many moms who've shared their stories with me that their kiddos have misplaced their wallet this is for that so get creative use all the different materials you want and it's going to be a fun one so just a little tip since i've now made a dozen of these they come together so fast and literally made it the night before christmas so that's how fast it comes together um, when I get my waterproof canvas, I have it, it's 60 inches wide, so I fold it in half and I roll it up and I store it that way. So I would just leave it folded and cut out your pieces in twos so you have a second wallet ready to go the next time you need a last minute gift or for your production sewing. And then it's very quick. I love to have my pieces ready to go because at any moment my kids say, I need a birthday present, can you make me a wallet? And I did that in 30 minutes. You can too. So I've got all my pieces cut out and prepped, ready to go. I do have a separate section cut out, ready to go, so I can show you the two different closure options. The main one is a Velcro closure, but I did include instructions to do a snap closure. So the, the main zipper of the cash slip pocket, or not a slip pocket, but a cash pocket, is constructed a little bit differently. So I will cut to that portion so you can see how both options are done. I am using waterproof canvas. I do find this to be the most domestic machine friendly version because it's thin and it is non-fraying. The overall end product of the wallet, the edges are folded in so there are raw edges, but it's not one of those projects where you're gonna need to paint the edges at all. You don't really notice it. So it's still important though that you use a non-fraying material. So just like all of my recent patterns, it will include SVGs as well. And I want to draw your attention to the main body exterior piece. There is a rectangle box on the bottom that I have since cut away, as you can see on this. This is a little window so that if you have a feature fabric that you want to show on the flap of your wallet, you can position it 
perfectly so that it's centered and that you can get it right on the flap where it needs to be. So for example, I'm gonna use this cute little Harry Potter print. So I, for the flap, it would the main print would need to be towards the bottom of this panel. So if I'm gonna have this be my feature, just kind of kind of center it where I would want. And this is how I would cut out this main piece. Otherwise, if you're just doing a waterproof canvas or a non-directional print, it doesn't really matter if you cut it sideways or vertical or anything. But I did this window just because people, my testers mainly were asking like, how do I position my directional material for that main cut? So this window is for you. So just please keep in mind that my videos are supposed to supplement the written instructions. So as you probably notice, I don't often give measurements um, because I, I do want you to read through the pattern and, and get your information from there. But all of my patterns can be purchased from lindshandmade.com if you're looking to um, get your own copy of this. So when I lay out my pattern pieces for the very first time, I'll keep them oriented by um, their purpose. So this is the interior portion of the wallet that all of the pockets go onto. And then these are two card slots. The one card slot is a little bit taller than the other, but they are the same width, but it's really close to the coin pocket. So I keep those two separated. And then this same little top of the coin pocket piece is also very closely close in size to the um, bias strip that goes on your ID window. So just keep them separate and oriented so you don't get confused because that will affect the end um, construction overall look of your wallet. I'm gonna prep my card slot pieces and then also the bias strip pieces. So I'm gonna take everything else and just kind of set it off to the side. I don't need the coin pocket or that zipper, set that off to the side. So we're gonna take the um, card slot two and card slot one and we're gonna flip them over and draw a half inch line from the very top of the pattern piece. So if it is directional, you wanna be mindful of that. And then of um, the other card slot, you're gonna do the top and the bottom a half inch in. And then for those little bias strips, we're gonna mark the center length. So these are three quarters inch high, so halfway point would be three eighths inches. And I know some of us were overthinking that, but I actually had it on my little handy dandy little ruler here that it actually just lines up perfectly at the three eighths inch little dots and it's pretty easy to find your center that way. But go ahead and get your lines drawn, and then we're gonna add some double-sided tape to the top and bottom edges here, and also the top and bottom edges of each of these strips. That helps hold the fold over in place. If you are concerned about your double-sided tape gumming up your needle on your machine, you may want to put your double-sided tape just above this bottom edge, and just below this edge so that when you fold it over and you sew close to the edge, your needle won't go through that double-sided tape. All right, so I did um, prep the bias strips. I'm gonna take the long one that's on a later step. We're gonna set that aside and we're gonna keep this one handy because we're gonna go ahead and add it to our ID window. But you'll see that um, card slot two has the two folded edges and then card slot one has just the one folded edge. So they now are the same height. So that is important. Um, I did fold that top edge to the line. So the, the line we drew is not the fold line. So it's only a little quarter inch fold. We're gonna take this to the sewing machine and top stitch an eighth inch from this folded edge on both pieces. We're gonna leave the bottom folded edge unsewn for now. So we have our center line drawn on the bias strip piece for the ID trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paper backings now and I'm gonna center my clear vinyl at that line. And then we're gonna fold the top edge right over to meet the opposite side. 
What's nice about clear vinyl is you can perfectly see that it's now nice and even. All right, so we're gonna take these three pieces to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew an eighth inch from this bottom edge and then an eighth inch from the top folded edges of the card slots. We have our pieces top stitch. We're just going to set them aside for the uh, a future step. Now I'm grabbing the um, zippered coin pocket pieces. So we have the bottom portion and the top portion, and then our um, smaller zipper. I personally find this step easier to sew if I have my zipper pull off, so that I don't have to stop, pause, and move. Because even though um, we're very careful, when you add the zipper pull, there's still always a little bubble which can cause the tape to kind of move. And I feel like you'll see that bubble a little bit in a wavy zipper in the end. So if you're using a standard zipper, you'll want to use a five or six inch zipper and then make sure the pull is off to the side so we don't have to mess around with that. So right now I'm going to go ahead and start with the bottom portion of the in pocket here and I like my double-sided tape just to hold things in position so when I mentioned in the beginning that it's all um, non fraying materials it's because this project is also completely unlined so I like the little plastic backing of the waterproof canvas there's no interfacing there so there's no lining pieces in any portion of this um, pattern so now I'm going to take this the zipper and lay it face down aligning these top edges together and press it into the tape and we're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance, press it, the bottom portion away from the zipper, and then top stitch. Now I'm going to repeat with the top portion, but we're not going to top stitch at the end. We're going to end up folding this top edge towards the back. So I will show you that um, in this step. But I'm going to go ahead and add my double sided tape again. I really love eighth inch double sided tape for zipper installs because um, it helps things really um, from not shifting. All right, and then when I'm working with waterproof canvas, I tend to sew with the zipper portion side up because then um, it doesn't tend to drag. A lot of times this plasticky backing on the waterproof canvas can cause my stitches to drag as it catches on my foot because I don't have a Teflon foot on this um, machine right now, just a standard foot. So just like with the bottom portion, I am going to press this up and away, but I'm not top stitching. Instead, I'm gonna add a piece of double-sided tape to the back and we're gonna fold this down encasing the zipper tape. And then we're gonna leave it just like that, not top stitch, and we'll end up top stitching it when we add it to the interior portion of our wallet. If you are doing snaps, you can jump to the next section, but I'm doing first with a Velcro closure. So you notice you'll have the um, soft side and the rough side. It is the rough portion that's going on this interior portion of the wallet. So you're starting off with five and a quarter inches and the interior does need to be trimmed down to four and a quarter. And then I add a little piece of double-sided tape to this back just to kind of help hold things in place. And we are gonna measure up quarter inch from the bottom and lay the bottom edge down there. Just like that. So now I'm just going to sew around the perimeter of this, securing it to the coin pocket.
Okay, so now I do need to add my pull back onto my zipper before I move on to the next step. They do have special gadgets out on the market where you could easily add your pull. It looks, um, it's got like a prong and you set your zipper on and you just put it on your tape. I don't have one of those to show you, but I do just typically put it on um, myself. I am right-handed, so I hold the zipper pull in my right hand. We wanna feed it from right going to left. So um, I'm opening up the right-hand edge and I just have to push this in and we're trying to eyeball that it's roughly centered on here and then you push it until you can feel like it clicked and it's actually going on. But this is that little bulb bubble I'm talking about when we go to sew it on. It still can affect the zipper install no matter how hard you, you, you pause and you move it out of the way. So I just prefer to do it this way, but you do what's easiest for you. So then I just kind of move it so it's in the center but not coming up to this edge and now we can add it to the interior portion of our wallet. Now we're gonna assemble the interior portion of the wallet. So I'm gonna grab the ID pocket we've already prepped, um, card slot two, card slot one, and then the zipper pocket. So starting with the ID window, we are gonna go ahead and line it up on the right-hand edge of this um, interior body port piece. We're gonna clip it in place. Now I got these cute little quirky labels from mormino.com. Hey handsome, I feel like it needs it. So I'm gonna add my label here. Feel free to skip that, you don't need to, or add it somewhere else. So we're gonna add that there, and then we're gonna measure from this edge a half inch and draw a line. So I'm just gonna turn this because I'm right-handed. Move my clip out of the way. Line up my half inch mark and draw a line. It doesn't need to be a removable pen because we are gonna place our pattern piece right on top of that and then another half inch line above that okay so now we got our two lines now you've got your two card slots that are looking identical right now but keep in mind one has the folded edge so that's going to need to be on this bottom portion and this one needs to be placed down first so we line up the bottom edge on top of that line and we're going to clip this in place Now I need to sew this edge before I can add my second card slot. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now and then I'm gonna finish adding my coin pocket. So this raw edge is going on the left-hand edge and clip in this in place. So now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these all in place. So first important sew is we're gonna tack this pocket down and then I'm gonna bring this with me lay it down and we're gonna tack the bottom edge of this in place. Then we're gonna sew across this top edge so it will complete and then sew all the way around these edges and that will make this a usable zippered pocket. And then we're gonna baste um, this in place and also the sides of our card slot once we add it. So I'm gonna sew um, an eighth inch from this bottom raw edge of card slot one. Now that that is tacked down, I can add card slot two. So take the folded edge, lay it right down on top of that marking and sew an eighth inch from the edge. Make sure I'm right on top so it's not crooked. Make sure that this is nice and even spread apart as well. Okay, now remember we want to go ahead and um, close this portion off, otherwise you won't have a usable pocket. Um, it, your coins will go sliding right out. And then while I'm at this edge, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish sewing the other three sides over here. We're getting real close to the raw edge. It's an eighth inch. And I'm just gonna kind of continue along this edge to tack the card slots down onto the interior made body. And now we're gonna come up on the window. So slowing over um, the plastic vinyl can be tricky if you don't have a Teflon foot, it, it sticks. 
So you want to be careful on, on this portion. I'm going to finish sewing up the sides here and then swap out to um, a Teflon foot for this. Or honestly, I'm probably going to jump on my other machine because it's already, it's a walking foot and it just keeps things simple. So just to recap, we did not sew this top edge of our ID pocket because we need our card to be able to slip in here, but we did sew the top edge of this coin pocket. So now it is a usable zippered pocket. Um, I also went off camera and basted the bottom edge of the vinyl in place. So now you'll notice that as we added our card slot, sometimes we have a little bit of an overhang here. So I'm gonna take this opportunity off camera to just really straighten up this edge so it's nice and straight on the top and bottom, and then we'll add the um, trim to the top portion of our interior. Once again, I'm gonna make sure my um, zipper pulls kind of in the middle out of the way. So we've drawn that center line. This is the 3 8 inch line. And we're gonna remove um, the adhesive backings now off of this strip. And we're gonna lay the top straight edge right on top of that drawn line. Just like so. I did add my double-sided tape just a little bit in from those raw edges so that I ideally won't be sewing through it as I get close to the edge. So now we're gonna take this top edge, fold it down over, finger pressing into place. Now, if you're using vinyl or leather or cork for this step, these portions can be pretty thick. So for leather, I would definitely skive all edges of the rectangle pieces or stick to a leather that's really no thicker than two ounces and has like a nice firm temper. Um, but otherwise, you're going to want to hammer these areas down so that um, they're nice and um, flush and easy to sew over. So once this is pressed in place nicely, I'm going to go as close to the edge, this bottom edge as possible, an eighth inch, and sew across. So this next step is if you're doing the Velcro closure, otherwise you're gonna to need to skip ahead so I can show you how to adjust the zipper for the snap closure option. So I've added my pull, and for this wallet, I've had it go on from the left side to end up on the right side. And I only did that because I didn't want my zippers on top of each other. So if we flip this around where I usually do my zippers opening left to right, then I you'll have um, kind of these zippers on top of each other. And then the way the wallet folds, they kind of both um, compete for the Velcro. So you can do how you prefer, but I prefer my zipper pull to be on this side. And piggybacking off of that, when it comes to this wallet style, I actually do prefer a less dangly pull, a smaller pull, so that they don't dangle outside of the wallet. But in every other instance, I love a dangly pull. So that's all I have. That's all I'm using for today. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the very bottom edge of my zipper tape here. And then we'll peel off that paper backing here. And now get my pull out of the way. Now I'm going to take the folded edge of the trim and I'm going to lay it an eighth inch from the actual teeth. So it's kind of hard to see here, but they do have little rows of stitching on your tape. So just kind of find a row and stick with it or eyeball it really well and just stay an eighth inch. So another option for the Velcro installation is you can take your pull off and sew this down and put your pull back on, but you're not gonna be able to do that for the snap installation because that has a zipper tab. So I'm gonna cut to that uh, section, show you how to do it for the snap option. Again, if you're doing the Velcro option, you're gonna skip past this section, but if you're doing the snaps, listen up, this portion is for you. So you have a zipper tab and a shorter zipper. You're gonna take the right side of the zipper tab and lay it face down on the end of the zipper here and clip in place. We're going to go over to the sewing machine and use a quarter inch seam allowance to sew that. Press it open away from your zipper and then top stitch. So 
Okay, so again, I want the pull on um, the, to the right hand edge so that it opens that way. And I've already added the double sided tape to the bottom here. Now I like to line up this seam kind of with the seam of the bottom pocket. And then if there's any excess of your zipper you need to trim, we would trim it off this portion. So we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna place it down an eighth inch from the zipper coil and press that in place. So these are kind of lined up and then there's a little overhang. Again, not the end of the world, not a problem. You're just gonna trim that down. So now you're gonna go ahead and just stitch, top stitch across this top, attaching it to the zipper an eighth inch from that folded edge. And now we are just gonna top stitch an eighth inch from this folded edge, attaching it to the zipper. You'll have to put stop with your needle down and move your zipper pull out of the way. And like I said, remember we were talking about on the coin pocket, how it can create this little bubble. So just do your best to make sure it's still lined up an eighth inch from the tape. And finish sewing. So this is what you should be working with. If you ha are doing the snap option, you have your zipper tab on this side and this portion is complete. If you're doing Velcro, you've attached your Velcro and you have the full size zipper. So we're gonna set these aside and now we're gonna work with the um, exterior main body. Now mine is waterproof canvas, a non-directional print. So to me, it doesn't really matter unless I have a feature. So if I did cut this out and it's a directional print and I want this on my flap, then I'm gonna be adding my snap hardware on this portion. So um, keep that in mind. So say this is the pretty design, this is my flap. I'm gonna transfer my snap placement marks through these little holes. So I'll just draw a little line, transfer it on this piece, and then I'll show you for the um, Velcro portion how we'll, we'll do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure in one and a half inches from that left-hand edge and place our Velcro piece down centered. You will have half inch gaps on the top edge and the bottom edge. So just like the other one, I'll add a little piece of double-sided tape just to kind of hold it in place. I'm not worried about my needle going through it because we are just sewing the edges. There we go. Now we'll go to our sewing machine and we're going to sew around the perimeter. So I transferred my snap placement marks from my pattern piece onto my material. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and punch those holes. There we go. Now, waterproof canvas is a nice sturdy material, but it is very thin. So um, whenever I'm doing snaps, I do like to make some sort of washer out of uh, a extra piece of this material or a uh, stiffer interfacing just to prevent the snap from pulling through over time. It just adds a little bit of stability. Now I'm gonna show you the snaps that I'm using and what I recommend. So in the pattern, it does call for a spring snap or also known as a fashion snap. So you'll see the post is a quarter inch. It's not very long. And then when you compress it in the little cap portion here, it's even shorter. So you do not want to use a line 20 or line 24 snap because you could see how much thicker and bulkier this is and this is a strong snap this is meant for thick materials like leather cuffs or you know duck canvas multiple layers and this is going to be too strong and too much for a wallet like this so i would not encourage you to use this you could also use those plastic cam snaps that are often used in like um, cloth diapering those would work just fine too but please stick with a smaller spring or, or fashion snap for this purpose. So for this portion of the wallet, we are using the male portion of the snap. So you have one longer post and then the cap that goes on top of it is a little smaller post. So that's gonna be pushed through the back side. The longest post goes through the back side. But before I do that, I am gonna go ahead and thread the little washer 
onto my prong and I'm going to push it from the back side here and then place this little cap portion on it and I just kind of finger press it until I kind of feel it catch in place but then I do have to set it with my machine a press so you either have uh, manual tools or you can have a hand press so I use my little washer here thread it through the other side again add the little cap so that you could kind of feel it press into place I'm not getting good pushback because this is a foam board but anyways we're gonna go ahead to my little hand press and set these in place all right, so I've just set them. They're nice and snug in place. And I flipped the piece around and I did go ahead and draw my box line so that I can know where to position my interior portion. So you can see they got a little bit of washers. You are gonna see that. Like I said, the whole wall is unlined, so you will see this portion. So I cut little circles. Um, you can do little squares, whatever you want, but you will end up seeing that if you look into um, your bag. So now you're gonna take the one your um, interior with the zipper tab because this is the snap we're going to put the snaps on the right side because we're going to add the interior portion of the snaps on the left side so you're just going to lay that down inside the drawn box lines like this and we're going to add some double-sided tape to these edges and we're going to fold them over in place so if you're doing the velcro option we need to swap the sewn Velcro, it needs to be on the right hand edge. This is important because our Velcro over here needs to be on this edge so that when we do our trifold, you have something to stick it to. If you forget to rotate it, you get it all sewn up, you're gonna have no Velcro to snap to, okay? So I've drawn my half inch line boxes and I've added double sided tape so that all I have to do, keep my Velcro to the right, is I have to just center the panel inside those lines it helps keep me accurate and guided and whatnot i'm moving zipper pulls out of the way so we're going to remove the adhesive from the adhesive backing from the tape off of all sides and we're going to start with these long edges so for the first side keeping my zipper lined up with that line i'm going to fold this edge over to within a eighth inch of the zipper tape, just how we did it before. And I'm gonna fold it over all the way to the edge, but it wants to pop up because of the zipper. So I'm gonna use clips as well to kind of hold this fold. And then we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna repeat with this edge. I'm gonna fold it over just like this. And you will find if you are using thicker materials, these bumps might cause this folded edge to pull um, up a little bit. So you really want to hammer those, those bumps. But that's why I say waterproof canvas is the most domestic machine friendly because it's really flush and it's working really well. So I fold that over. Then when we come to this side, I'll start with the center and move out to the edges. Now you could just leave it a straight fold like that. I do kind of like the look of the mitered corner. So what I just do is I take that little corner here and I just tuck it down underneath and I fold it just like that. Now, again, with vinyl, that portion can be very thick. So you can trim it down to get that or definitely take your hammer and hammer these corners really well. So I'm gonna repeat that with this. I'm just gonna tuck that fold down and tuck it. Now I don't trim the edges off of both pieces because I don't want this portion to be raw. I don't want a raw point up here because I worry about the durability over time when you're opening and closing a wallet and you're shoving it in and out of a back pocket or a purse or something like that. So I don't trim those down. I leave them folded. Tuck that corner up and down. And same thing here. So now that we have this all in place, I'm gonna take this to um, a hard table or the floor and hammer those corners. And we're gonna go ahead and sew it up. Before we go and sew this edge, I did mention in my intro video that if you have like a younger child or you wanna add a chain, 
You would want to add that um, at this point if you're going to use the D-ring option. So this is a cute little half inch D-ring with a, a hole here for to add um, a swivel clasp. You would add that in between the largest gap on the wallet between the card slots and the zipper pocket. So I would just plop that in here closer, closer to this edge so it doesn't interfere with my card that's sticking out. But then I would want to get as close to this edge as possible so that when you hook something there, it pops in or out but doesn't hang outside the wallet. So there's that option if you have a little bit of webbing or a piece of your material and a D-ring. The other option I show is with one of these little baby D-rings or a corset ring. Some of the small shops are carrying them or I got them off of Amazon. So same, same concept. I would have the D-ring facing this way and I would position it closer um, to the top so that it doesn't interfere with the card slot and then I would set it with a rivet. So I position it so it's not hanging out but this gets added after we sew if you're doing a rivet. But it would go through all layers, so it would show on the exterior of the wallet. This one would not. So it's just important to know which method you're using because this needs to be tucked in now. This needs to be added later. Okay, so I'm going to sew with the interior face up because I want to get as close to this raw edge that's folded over as possible with my first pass of stitching. In the pattern, I do right where we also sew close to this folded edge. So you got two rows of stitching about a quarter inch apart. I like the look. But if you're worried about how pretty your top stitching looks and you don't want to draw attention to a top stitch, I would just encourage you to stick with just the one layer of um, row, one row of stitches. All right, so I did go ahead, go back around and do that second row of stitching because I do love the look of it. So now you're gonna fold this right hand edge up and then this left hand edge down. Now you'll notice that um, the Velcro only goes to this portion, but we cut it the full length because aesthetically I liked the look of that versus stopping it here on the exterior. So it's personal preference, but um, that is why I wrote it for bigger. Obviously it's not gonna catch there, but I love the look of this better. Voila. So if you have done the snap version, stick around. I'm gonna show you how to install that second portion. Okay, so for this portion, we just have the one set of snaps installed. So we do have to add the second sets here. So um, you're gonna take um, your um, measuring tool and we're gonna measure in three quarters of an inch and up three quarters of an inch. So I got my little tool here and I'm gonna mark a spot right there. We're gonna repeat this on this side we're going to go in three quarters inch and down, and I'm going to put my snap right there. So the depending on the materials you're using and the folds and whatnot, sometimes uh, thicker materials could actually have your snap be in a different spot. So before you go punching holes and everything, what I would encourage you to do is to go ahead and fold it. The fold ends up right here in this gap here. Fold it up and fold this over and just make sure that where your snap's gonna be, that it is lined up, that it's not like this or like that. And then same thing on this side. So we're gonna pretend this is where our snap is gonna go and I'm gonna line it up right there. Looks good with this edge and then I'm gonna line it up right there. Also looks good. So now I feel good about punching those holes. But if you go to place your marking and all of a sudden you're going to set it and it's like this, or something, adjust it. Like that, that's you don't have to punch the hole based on these measurements if it if your materials have affected that. So do the double check before you punch your holes. All right. So now the second portion of the snap, you have a, the pretty side. That's the cap. That's going to be showing on the exterior of your wallet. So that's this piece. And then you have the female portion of the snap that will be on the interior of your wallet. So from the outside, you place the pretty side in through the hole you just punched. And then it looks kind of confusing, but this is the wrong side. So we want this side with the little prints and stuff face up and you put that right on top. 
Now I didn't cut any washers because we are going through multiple layers. That will be strong enough. So I'm gonna put this flat cap portion in the, the dome portion of my setting tool and then set this um, according to manufacturer instruction. I'm using my hand press, but you could use those hand um, setting tools. And then I'll repeat with this portion of the snap going through, place that on top. And here you go. This is what you are left with. Open it up, your wallet is complete. So if you do wanna add that um, D-ring tab, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so um, if you're gonna go ahead and add that D-ring, we want it to face towards me. So I'm gonna lay this towards the left side up against the coin pocket here so it doesn't interfere with my card slots. And I'm gonna line the um, fold of the D-ring portion just right here so it doesn't hang over the edge and you can't see it and I'm not punching through the, the edge there. So I'm gonna place my marking there, punch my hole and set it with the rivets these come with. Alrighty, fold this up. My long pull is kind of in the way here. All right, add your lanyard for your little one. Now they can hang it from their neck. There's that. Or you add that cool chain. Flip it to your pocket and you are good to go.